Welcome e-teachers to this section of our training course, Padlet. Language learning requires communication and communication requires interaction. Padlet is a great place for that and a good go-to app for many online and in-class activities. Padlet is easy to use and allows teachers and students to create and share content of all kinds, facilitating friendly collaboration. But before students learn how to create a Padlet, you should get familiar with its many great features. So in this section, we're going to learn how to create a Padlet together. To get started, first go to padlet.com. This is the homepage of the Padlet platform. To sign up, click sign up for free here, and Padlet will ask you to sign up with an email account. Um, of course, you can choose Google, Microsoft, Apple. I'm going to choose to sign up with Google. Now I'm going to enter my Gmail account and password. Once you log into Padlet using your email account, you can see that Padlet asks you to choose which plan you want. So you can choose to subscribe to Padlet, or you can choose to start with the free version, which is called Neon. I think for our demonstration purposes, let's choose the free plan. As is usually the case, you can try out the free version of an app, and if it supports and enhances your teaching, you may choose to subscribe later. All right, so I'll click Continue on the free plan, and then click Let's Go here to get started. As I mentioned before, Padlet is a platform that allows you numerous ways to share, present, create, and collect learning content with your students. Once you start using it, eTeachers recommends you to explore Padlets created by other experienced educators to get inspiration for new ways to use it in your English classroom. But for starters, we want you to know your way around the platform, so we'll show you its features and do a demonstration activity together. To start your Padlet, find the pink Make a Padlet button in the top right of your page and click that. Immediately, Padlet will need some information from you to know what kind of format you want. So let's take a look at your options. To get an idea of what each format may look like, just hover over it to get a preview. For example, this wall layout shows each post organized in even columns, but the rows vary according to the length of the post, so it looks kind of like a wall covered with picture frames. If you divide the whole layout into different sections, you can also choose this wall with sections option called shelf. This format is excellent for dividing students into different groups, one for each column or for dividing the learning content into different topics for each column. In the example we'll show you, uh, we actually do both. We divide by topics and student groups. All right, in addition to the wall layout, we also have this canvas layout. This format shows the connections between different posts, making it very useful for mind mapping or brainstorming activities or for content emphasizing a sequence or a flow of ideas or events. After Canvas, we have the timeline format. This is great if students are writing a story, biography or autobiography, or any recount narrative that shows a sequence of events. This can also be a good format for providing a combination of text and visual references when teaching or reinforcing verb tenses or other language objectives related to time, such as adverbs or modals. This next one is a, the grid layout. As you can see, this is similar to the wall layout, which has evenly distributed columns, but grid also has evenly distributed rows as well. So it has this boxy, uh, well, grid looking layout. Okay, this next one is called Stream. This layout gets its name from the stream or river-like flow of posts that just come one after the other in a row. That may be great for showing continuity, such as commenting on a topic, 
um, or reflecting a class or group discussion brainstorm. The layout is familiar to the flow of many social media apps like FB or IG as well, so it might provide a more informal feel for many student activities. You might go with that if you're using this in a classroom discussion, for example. We've seen the next one wall already, so let's look at this next map layout. Uh, with this one, you or your students can pin any location on a map and make a post related to that location. Just like the timeline layout that provides a clear context in time for students, the map layout can provide a good, clear location context for various kinds of activities, especially for non-language arts content related to countries, culture, travel, history, that kind of thing. Now, let's move on to the advanced formats. This is where we can really design engaging activities. Though called advanced, there's nothing really complicated about these layouts. The advanced section essentially allows you to create the simple formats, but with sections, which allow you to have different layouts in each section. For example, timeline with sections allows the creation of different timelines in different sections. This is useful if you want to invite different student groups to work on different stories or to create a different timeline for the same story, for example. Um, or you can even allow each student a different section in order to have their own timeline. Okay, under timeline with sections, you also have this grid with sections option. As I mentioned, each of these advanced options allow sections. So it's quite convenient to divide groups or content or even the whole class, giving each student a section depending on the design of your activity. A quick pro tip here, although Padlet is an excellent app for interaction, that's why we're here, it can also be an effective presentation platform. Uh, you can create any learning content organized according to the most ideal layout that we've looked at here and then share the link with students, allowing them just to view or to comment and other ways to present, uh, which we'll see later as well. Okay, very versatile. Here is the stream with sections layout. Here is the wall with sections. And finally, the map with sections layout. All right, that's a look at all of your layout options. Quite a nice variety. For our demonstration activity, I would like students to do an in-depth analysis of a short but meaningful poem to think about it from different perspectives. But I also want them to work with their classmates in small groups. So for this activity, I think I'm going to choose the shelf layout, which is the wall with sections. So I'll scroll back here and click it to choose that one. Once it's selected, you can see that a Padlet instantly creates a Padlet template for us to work with. Notice that on the left, your browser may ask you if you want to allow Padlet to show you notifications. Um, so that's up to you, allow or block. You also have your settings options on the right here, uh, which you can select right away or you can choose them later. For example, here I can title my Padlet. I'll choose the name of the poem that we're going to learn, Nothing Gold Can Stay. Once I write that and click Done, it will be saved and shown as the title of this Padlet. Now under the title there, I can also choose to give a description or more details about the Padlet. Uh, well, this one is all about a poem. So the objective is to help students understand an English poem more deeply so uh, just to be straightforward, I'll write Understanding an English Poem. To save it, click Done here on the right again. Now we have the title and description. We can also customize the icon here in the settings if we like. That gives a little flavor. You can choose an icon you think is relevant or symbolic or just nice for your topic. I'll choose these falling leaves because they kind of show the lapse of time 
and the impermanence of nature, uh, which are themes of this poem. Be sure to save here. Okay, beneath the icon, you'll see another important design feature. You can adjust the whole wallpaper or background of the Padlet platform. This default view is nice and it's green. It looks natural, but it doesn't quite match the feel or the theme of the poem. And after all, I like to choose a more simple design of plain wallpaper, which highlights the posts a little bit better. I think this one is fine. By the way, you can also choose your own picture as wallpaper. If you have something specific in mind down here, as you can see, you can upload your own picture, take a picture, or even draw your own wallpaper and upload it to Padlet. There are link and search options too. So I think both teachers and students who are creating their own Padlets can really enjoy this variety of options. Okay, I'm quite happy with the one that I have, so I'm going to click here to save the wallpaper. And that's it for wallpaper. Here I can adjust the color scheme. For example, I could choose to make it dark or light. For the font style, you have four different options. Once I click on my choice, the entire Padlet will alter its font. And so you can see that we have four different fonts now, uh, Niagara, Thames, Fuji, and Alps. I'm going to stick with this one, the default, Alps. All right, and then here under Layout, notice that we have another easy opportunity to divide our Padlet into sections if we had chosen a simple layout earlier. Um, so for example, if you have the basic canvas layout, and you decide that you want to use your Padlet for a group activity, uh, you can grab this chance to enable the Group Posts by Section feature here. Uh, so it will then allow posting by sections. Very flexible for teachers. All right, below the layout control is the posting controls with some essential options. You can toggle on author and timestamp, and posts will then show students' names and when they post their content. Okay, the next option is also very important. If you turn on comments, you'll allow students to comment on their classmates' posts. Another kind of feedback you can allow on posts is here, reactions. This lets you choose whether readers can like or heart a post, vote for it, thumbs up or down, star, one to five stars, or give it a numeric grade with the grade option here. I think that I'll allow likes here and I'll save it with the magenta button. All right, now under that reactions button, we can choose where new posts to the Padlet appear as first or last. If you choose first, this is a kind of blog or IG style where the most recent posts land on the top. If you want posts to be more like a line with first posts first and last posts last, just choose that here. The next settings control section, content, is uh, very important for teacher Padlets because the first option allows you to turn on moderation. Padlet describes it as require approval. If you toggle that on, you can have activities in which students post, but they don't appear on the Padlet until you read and approve them. That is very useful for some homework or any kind of graded activities. But if you design group activities or you want students to interact more, uh, you can always leave this off. I'm going to leave it off for our demo activity because I want students to actively participate, read and respond to each other's posts. Okay, after requires approval, you can also filter profanity. So if you turn it on, any bad words will be replaced with emojis. Uh, this can be an added value safety feature if there is any such concern, especially if you are going to allow anonymous posts or comments, um, though most teachers will require names anyway. 
This Remakes feature allows other Padlet users to use your template as a Padlet. If, for example, your colleagues can conduct the same Padlet activity um, that you did starting with your design. Um, so that can be useful if you like to share your good ideas for Padlet activities. Finally, if you would like to customize the URL of your Padlet, you can change it right here, making it easier to remember or more accessible for your students. For example, I can change my Padlet activity link into Robert Frost. Since he's the author of our poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay. And as with the previous settings, simply click the pink Save to save this setting. All right, so once you have selected all your settings, you can click this X icon to exit the Settings window, uh, which will take you back to the full screen view of your Padlet wallpaper or the workspace. Now we can get down to the business of creating Padlet posts. Cool. Keep in mind that the variety of layouts the number of design features and this variety of settings we just looked at really allow you to create many different kinds of interactive activities. For this demo, I want my students to work in groups, each on a different aspect of the poem. Each group will be expected to analyze some feature or characteristic of the poem. Um, and because of this design, I'm going to use the sections layout option and I'll want to label or name my sections according to each group's responsibility. So to do that, I'll double click the generic section one title here and give it my own title. Um, the first group I'm going to create is the author group. This group of students will learn more about Robert Frost, the author. Click the little done icon and the section is now renamed. Simply click Add Section here to add another section, and I'm going to rename this one as the Reading Group. These students will be responsible for learning to read the poem with correct intonation and pronunciation, um, even more important to convey the meaning and feeling of the poem. So let's click Done and save it, and add another section by clicking here again, and we'll be able to give a name to this section as well. I'll call it the meaning group because I want the students to analyze the meaning of the poem line by line. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to create a language group so students can analyze some of the language features of the poem. So these are the four groups that I want my students to be divided into for the poetry reading activity. So let's get started with posting content to the first group of this activity, the author group. So we will now create our very first post about our poem's famous author, Robert Frost. To create a new post, you can choose to either click the plus icon here at the top of the group column, uh, when you have sections, that is, or click this orange plus icon in the corner and immediately your draft post pops up and you can add a subject or title to the post. Uh, since I'm planning to attach a picture of the author um, so other students will know what he looks like, I will just call this post Robert Frost. Now I'm going to insert Frost's picture. I can choose different options from these icons. I can upload a picture, if I already have one, from the Upload File option here. I can take a picture um, if, for example, I had a book with his picture on it. I could just take my own picture. Here I could attach a link to a picture online, um, or I could simply use this icon to search for an image within Padlet. Very efficient. Once you click on it, you can see that on the top left corner here, Padlet will ask us to provide permission to access the text and images copied to the clipboard. I'm going to allow that. And you can see that Padlet actually gives the suggestion Robert Frost for my search, which it cleverly grabbed from my title. So I don't need to retype the name myself. I can just take its suggestion and click away. 
almost instantly you can see that Padlet generates many good options of picks of Robert Frost. I'm going to choose this color one by clicking it and it's inserted directly into my post. I can also click here to add a caption to the picture um, or I can click here to remove the picture if I would like. Okay, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to publish our first post, wow, by clicking the publish button here. Voila, we have our first post. Since we didn't use the section icon to make this post, it landed here in the language group, no worries. If you ever need to move a post, just click and drag it to wherever you want it. Okay, now I'm going to add another post about Frost's birthplace. Uh, so to do that, I'll click here on the plus icon under the author group. You can enter a title here like we did for the first one. Uh, this post will be called The Birthplace of Robert Frost. This time, I'm going to attach a location, which is the birthplace of Robert Frost. In order to do that, I will find more options with the three dot icon here, and then I will find the location icon at the bottom corner. All right, since Robert Frost was born in San Francisco, I'm going to search it here. You can see this image comes up, and on the bottom, you can choose different views of this location. You have road, satellite, terrain, and hybrid views. I'm going to go with the first one, the road view. I like how that looks. Uh, now notice on the right, if you tick this little box, you can choose to show the pin. Um, so there is a pin on my map. I think that's cool. Looks good. And once it's done, I can save to save the map. And like the previous post, um, I can add a caption um, or I can click here to remove it and try another location, for example, or another view if I like. So you start to see a pattern of how the posts work. All right, I think this looks good. So I'm just going to publish it. Okay, this is the second post for the author group. Now I'm going to add a third post for this group um, showing you a different kind of post and it will direct the students to learn more about the author. The title for this post will be more about Robert Frost. Um, and for this one, I am going to choose to insert a link um, and then students will be able to follow it and explore more about the author. Here I can just paste the link I've chosen um, and then click this icon and you can see that the link has been inserted into my post. Um, I also get a very nice preview picture from that website right there in the post. Very nice design feature. Like the previous posts, I can click here to remove the link. I'm going to publish this post and you can see that now we have three posts under the author group. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's move on to the reading group. As I mentioned before, I want my students to learn to read this poem well. Um, so in this Padlet, they will share their reading of the poem by recording a video of themselves reciting it. But before that, I want to provide them an audio example so they can have a reference for their own practice. Okay, so let's create a new post here by clicking on this button and write the title of this post again. But because it's a model for my students, I'll add the word model there in parentheses or brackets. That should make it clear what the purpose of this post is. Okay, in the text box of the post, I will paste the entire poem um, so students can look at it, read it as a reference, while they're learning and practicing to recite the poem. Now, to insert an audio recording, just click the three dots icon here, and then find audio recorder here. Once you click on it, you can see that in the top left corner, Padlet asks permission to access my microphone. Very polite, I'll allow it. 
and you'll see that you'll be able to record audio of up to 15 minutes long. So in many English lessons, just recording audio examples, audio instructions by the teacher, and inviting students to post audio speaking posts uh, will be great practice and all you need for an effective lesson. Um, but as we can see, there are many, many rich alternatives. By the way, if you have multiple microphones, uh, you can select the one you want. I'm going to stick with my default microphone. Now, to start recording, I can click this red record icon in the middle. All right, so let's provide an example of the poetry reading for the students. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. Dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. To pause your recording, just click on the icon here in the middle again. Uh, now we have our recording, we can see the length there, and you can choose what to do next. You can click the record icon to continue recording the same audio, the same audio file. Um, so you can stop and continue and stop and continue if you like. Or you can click here to discard and restart the audio recording. If you want to listen to it and check it, click playback and save. Once you do, you can click the play icon to hear it played back. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to click again to pause. You can adjust the volume here and Padlet also allows us to enter a caption for our audio recording. I will call it audio recording model. Now to save the post, I can simply click the button save here. And in a few seconds, my audio recording is uploaded to the draft of my post. And just like the other posts, I can always click here to remove it. If for example, I want to redo the audio recording. But when I'm ready to create the first post of our reading group, I'll do that by smashing the magenta publish button here. Okay, so we've just created the post for the audio. So students have a kind of reference for listening to the poem and knowing how it can be read, how it should be read, um, which presumably the teacher has also shown them in class. Now for this reading group, one assignment could be to ask the students to practice reading it aloud, and to make a video demonstration of them doing so. Um, so to make that post, let's go to the plus icon under the reading group here and add a post to this section. And that opens the window. And let's call this reciting the poem. Okay. Of course, we can add text here as well, now or later. And if we wanted to upload a video we had already recorded, we could always click the first icon there and upload a file. But we want to demonstrate how to create a video recording within Padlet. So go to the three dots more icon there. And you of course have these many options. You're looking for video recorder, uh, which is uh, right there in the middle, the top of the green section, click this. And Padlet will ask for permission to use your camera and microphone. Um, so it's pausing and waiting for you to do that. As soon as you allow it, then the video recording window will open there. Um, so you can um, check to make sure your lighting is okay, that your framing is fine. And Padlet reminds you of uh, a few important points. One is that um, you can pause your video at any time after you start and then resume it. Um, so you don't have to get it perfect. If you want to take a pause or a break, you can do that. And um, the second reminder is that you have up to five minutes, which I think is perfect because student assignments or videos assigned for students to watch, it's best if they're kept short. Um, so I think five minutes is a good length of time. And the third one is you can check your video, preview it before you save or publish. Um, so we'll see how that works. 
Um, the last reminder is you have a beautiful smile. So Padlet is a very encouraging post for students. Um, at the bottom left, you can just check which microphone you're using. If you'd like to change the default, you can. I'm going to leave that one on default. And then I'm going to practice reciting the poem. So I just simply click the re record button here. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold, her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. Dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Okay, when I'm done reading it, I hit a pause, and it is pause. So if I'm uh, reading something longer or I take a break in the middle and I um, pause it, I can just click record to resume making the same video. Um, my other options are to just quit. I don't like this one. I'm going to discard and restart. You can do that. Um, and it'll just start recording again right away. Uh, you could close the window and go out and try again later. Um, but let's um, check out this video I've just made. So we'll click playback and save. So that opens the preview window here, which gives us a few more options. One is just to play it and see how it worked. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. So um, that's the first few seconds. Uh, we can change the volume of the playback. We can change the size of the playback by making it full screen there, clicking the full screen icon. Uh, we have other options. One which is very convenient is the download option. So you've made a video in Padlet. You can download it to your computer and then you can use it in other apps. You can upload it to Edpuzzle or Flip, for example, and use it there uh, or just keep it for your reference. So this is a nice feature. You can change the playback speed to be either faster or slower. That might be useful for students if they want to play it back a little bit slower. And then uh, finally, you have the picture-in-picture -picture viewing option. Okay, so we see in the preview window um, that it's 25 seconds. Um, we can add a title there if we like, or we can go back, but I'm going to save this video. It shows us the post again. I'm not going to add any text to this post at the moment. If I uh, want to remove it, I can do that right here. So we see the other options that all posts have. I'm just going to publish this now to the reading group. And perhaps I've published it, um, and we can see it there, but I've decided, oh, maybe it would be better to add a student video, uh, because in fact this is an assignment for students to read the poem aloud on video. And I have one from last year. So I'm going to go and remove that and then upload a file of one of my students reading the poem. And I'm going to update it there. Okay, so now I have a student sample of a video reading of Nothing Gold Can Stay. So now we have two posts in the reading group. Let's go to the meaning group. And in the meaning group, uh, naturally, we want students to think about the meaning of the poem. Um, there's a lot of activities we can do to encourage them to do that. Let's make a new post here by clicking the plus icon. And here, we're going to ask our students to make a mind map by working together in class with a sheet of paper. So uh, this is a kind of traditional mind map activity, but to share it with the class under their group, they might add a photo. So let's call this post lines one and two. And after their brainstorming and mind mapping, perhaps the students can reach some consensus on the meaning of the first two lines. And how did they come to this? Well, maybe they don't have perfect agreement, but they're discussing it, they're trying to understand it, and they've used a mind map to think through the vocabulary of the first two lines. So to show that mind map, they can click the camera icon. And this will start the camera. Um, and this is a very convenient way to upload media, is just take a picture right from within Padlet. 
So this is a mind map uh, that a group might have created um, that shows some of the vocabulary, a lot of the different associations with the vocabulary. What do they think it means? Is it concrete or abstract? Uh, or maybe this is a teacher's mind map um, that you want to show them as a model. So we'll just take a picture of that there. And you can see the countdown is three seconds. Well, maybe I don't like that picture. So I'm going to try again. This time I'll just show my face. And um, so just like the video, you can take it again as often as you like. Uh, right, so you get the countdown there, and then you have the option to add a caption here to change the coloration from normal to grayscale or black and white to sepia, which is an old-fashioned hue. Uh, but I think this looks fine in normal. And you can redo it as often as you like. You can close and go out, or you can save your picture there. So. Padlet creates the post, saves everything, and I'm going to publish it to the meaning group. Okay, so there's our first post to the meaning group. The group has made a mind map and thought about the essence of the meaning of the first two lines. All right, so we could comment on that later, or they can edit it. So again, I think I will edit this and actually go and share a student, an actual student mind map that was made in one of my classes as a more accessible reference for the students in the meaning group. Okay, so that's our first post under meaning group. Let's go on to the next post. To do that, I'll click the plus add post icon here and title this post line three, four. We'll add some text about the meaning of those lines as I want to demonstrate how diverse students' posts on Padlet can be, let's find a GIF image, perhaps, that can reflect something about the meaning of these lines of the poem. To do that, let's click on this search image icon here again, but this time, instead of searching for an image under this tab, we'll click on this GIF tab to search a GIF image. I'll choose the keyword flower and choose from quite a number of different GIF images here. I like this one. It gives some feeling related to those lines of the poem about flowers and time. So I'm going to click on it, and that will insert it into my post. I'm going to keep this as it looks good. So I'll click Publish here. Now we have lines 1 to 4 and so I'll need to create another post for this meaning group about lines five to seven. So I titled the post line five to seven, and again, I'll include a brief analysis or summary, uh, really as the text of my post. Of course, as the teacher, you'll give students some clear instructions on what to add here to their post. In this demo, students in the meaning group will discuss and decide the meaning of the poem together and write it here. This one is a simple text post, so I can publish it here to add it to our Padlet. I'll finish the posts in this meaning group uh, with one more for line eight, which is the climax and theme of the poem, Nothing Good Can Stay. Okay, so again, I'll just publish that as a text post. You can see that for the meaning group, we now have four posts, including all the lines of the poem. So now let's move on to the last group, the language group. In this group, students will be required to identify and analyze the language features of the poem. One of my instructions to this group is to identify an example of alliteration used in the poem. So the title of this first post will be alliteration, simple enough. For the content, I've instructed the students to include their lines of the poem and then highlight any examples of alliteration that they find. I'm going to put the first two lines here and highlight green and gold and hue and hold to demonstrate another way that students can share content. 
But that's it. Um, it's basically a text post formatted to highlight the language feature of alliteration. So now I'll just click on Publish to save the post. This is the first one to our language group. Now I'll create another post about another language feature of the poem, personification. I've asked students to identify any personification used in the poem, and they've come up with the point that in these two lines, Frost says, her early leaves a flower. So they can select her and highlight it as an example of personification. Okay, to demonstrate another kind of content here, let's say you want to make the posting activity more personal and engaging. You can allow students to attach a drawing to their post. Um, if they don't want to or can't draw, you can show them how they can click on the three dots icon here and then click on this green I can't draw button. This is kind of fun. You're still in the green creative content section. I'm going to show how you can draw on the Padlet. So I'll click on draw and now we see a whiteboard appear in the middle of the screen. Then I can choose a color to start drawing on the board and I'll choose this purple color pen to get started. I'm going to draw a flower as it's mentioned in this part of the poem and well to try to get a little creative and show some personification I'll make this flower a female, a her. I'll add some red lips here with the red ink pen. Now if you want to correct or erase anything you can always go to this eraser icon to remove everything from the palette, or you can simply click this undo icon once to remove just the last step. Now I'll draw the lips again. Okay, I think this looks fine. On the top here, by clicking black, I could change the board to a blackboard, but for this particular drawing, I prefer the whiteboard, so I'll stick with the default and click white and then save here. In just a few seconds, the drawing is inserted into the post and I can just click Publish to save the drawing and the post to the Padlet. Now I'd like to ask my students if they can find the allusions in the poem. As always, start a new post by clicking the plus icon and I will title this post, you guessed it, Allusion. For this one, let's paste these lines of the poem here. Well, that's an allusion to the biblical story of Adam and Eve. Eden began as a perfect heaven-like garden, but they were kicked out. So Eden sank to grief. So we'll highlight Eden sank to grief as our example of allusion. All right, and let's click publish again to add that one to our Padlet. And we want to add one more post to the language group so students can identify any examples of imagery that they find in the poem. So I'll create another post in the language group and title it imagery. I'll paste the last two lines here. Students can highlight the imagery here where Frost paints a picture of early morning dawn going down or decaying in a way to day. Very vivid language. Okay, so students can highlight that line, but they may want to include a video as an example of what this vivid language refers to. That will provide nice visual multimedia support to other students in the class who will be learning about the poem from members of each group. To attach a video, you can either click on the three dots icon here and then click on the orange YouTube button to search for your video in YouTube. You can also click the blue upload button to upload a video from your local device. For example, I've already prepared a time-lapse video of a sunrise, so I can select it and then upload it to my Padlet. That's beautiful and really helps to illustrate the meaning of the line, so dawn goes down today. So let's publish that last post for the language group 
by smashing the pink publish button as always. Cool. Now we have all the content created for this rather rich and attractive Padlet. We have a lot of content about Frost's poem now uh, and the poet himself. This is a good time to pause before I show you some of the other powerful features of Padlet that really puts control of activities into your hands as the teacher. But remember that this is just a one kind of Padlet, one demo. You have so many options and you can always adapt Padlet to the needs of your own classroom and students, whatever their level or language. Okay, as you'll see in a minute, Padlet is versatile too. It allows such a huge variety of formats and content posts. Padlet is suitable for very simple activities involving just short sentences or even one word posts from students. But even then the platform allows teacher and classmates to share and respond to each other. But of course, much more detailed and creative posts are possible here too, as we've just seen. I also want to point out that Padlet, as with most good educator apps, can do more than just facilitating creating posts. It now has a great presentation feature as well, slideshow. So if you want to, uh, you can make all the posts yourself and use Padlet to present them to your class. Very flexible. Our demo Padlet here, though showing group activities, could just as easily be a teacher presentation showing different aspects of this poem and how to understand it. Okay, let's move on to look at some of those other great Padlet features. Suppose you want to edit one of your own or one of your students' posts. It's easy. Go to the post that you want to edit and hover on the right top corner here and you'll see Edit up here. Click that and you can edit anything on the post. I'll just do a quick edit of the format of this text as an example. I'll make it bold. And to save the changes, I'll just click Update here. Done. That's how you can edit any post. But if you want to see more options for managing posts, just go to any post and click on the three dots more icon, like this one here you'll see this menu of options pop up. If you click Open Post, you'll see the post in full screen mode. This is great when you're presenting or reviewing content by projecting it in class or in an online lesson, or even just supporting one student and you want to focus on his or her post on your laptop, for example. To exit the full screen mode, you can click this close icon here under Open Post, we can also choose to open the post in the new tab. So we can have more than one open at a time and can return to them easily. Okay, under that option, we have this very useful feature, one I use a lot. You can grab the link to a specific post. This allows you to highlight or focus on any one post in a Padlet as independent content and then share it in another context. You might give a flipped class homework assignment to students, for example, to prepare a Padlet post. Well, if you include a link to a completed post, it will be a great reference or model for them. Okay, here you can start slideshow from this post. So this slideshow is actually a new feature I mentioned, and it enables you to present a live slide presentation of the Padlet content post by post. As I mentioned, this is very useful for reviewing student work together uh, or even presenting your own content. The formats of your Padlet are flexible, very creative, and can fit the theme, the wallpaper, and the posts to your own content. Just choose the post where you want to begin the slideshow and click this button. Next, you can change the background color of any post. I'll just change the background color of this one to yellow and this one to green and this one to purple. 
This allows students to personalize their posts a bit, or you can use the color as a feature of groups to give certain roles to group members, for example, like leader, presenter, researcher, etc. Okay, under the color is another way you can access edit the post, very convenient. Now these add post before and add post after icons can be clicked if you're creating a new post and you want to choose exactly where it goes on your Padlet. If you click one of those, it will open a new post template for you. And when you publish it, it will go right where you want it. You can also choose to just drag a post after it's already published to any new location on the Padlet, as I'm doing here. So I find that quite convenient, and that's the method I usually use to organize my own posts. Okay, the next two options you'll see under the More icon for managing posts is Duplicate Post and Transfer Post. These are also very useful. I often use these features to provide a model or reference for my students when I make a new Padlet, as I can just duplicate posts from one class or year group to another. So when you choose to copy a post, click Duplicate, and Padlet will ask you where you want to duplicate it to. You can copy it to any new Padlet, or to this one, or below there, you can pick any other Padlet that you have from the list of recent, bookmarked, or shared Padlets. Okay, I'll just quickly duplicate this post to another group for a demo here. It's very user-friendly. The same convenience goes for the transfer post option here. It's just like duplicate, except the post is moved to your chosen location instead of copied there. Again, you can move it to a new Padlet, or a different location, or section within the same Padlet, or to any other Padlet you've created as well. I'll move this post we duplicated back to the meaning group, and just delete this redundant one by clicking this three dots icon again. Okay, I'll go to our final option at the bottom there, Delete Post. Now before you confirm your choice, Padlet warns you to be careful because there's no trash bin to retrieve it from. It will be gone for good. Um, if you're sure, confirm your choice by hitting that red delete button. Okay, those are some convenient ways to manage individual posts within Padlet, including how to share or project a post, or even start a slideshow to project all the posts, one after the other. Now, if you have allowed certain interactive features in the settings when you made your Padlet, you'll see them here. So, for example, students will be able to like a post by clicking the heart. They can easily comment by selecting the post they want to comment on and entering it there. For example, this is the video sample we posted earlier of a student reciting the featured poem. You can either direct your students on what to comment as part of their assignment, such as giving peer feedback, or you can just allow some social comments to encourage interaction. So a student might just write, I like your reading. Click the arrow to post and the three dot menu to edit if you like. I'll add an emoji and hit update. If I choose to delete my comment, I can click the More menu again and hit Delete Comment. Once you start using your Padlet to teach or you've assigned students to work on it, it is an active Padlet. And you can always go to the right sidebar and click this bell icon here to monitor the activity of your Padlet to see what changes or updates have been made recently. This is also where you can follow or unfollow the Padlet if you want to stop receiving notifications about it, for example. You can close the activity panel here. Back on your Padlet, under the activity bell icon is a play button icon. If you click this, you will present your Padlet as a slideshow. 
Now we saw this feature while looking at how to manage your posts because you can start a slideshow from any post. But this play button will always just open a new tab and start presenting your Padlet as a slideshow from the beginning. So it's really quite convenient. This slideshow is a new feature, but I already love it. I often project or share class Padlets, and this just makes it so much more elegant and easier to do so. So just click the navigation icons to move around the Padlet or choose the three dots menu to allow these options to copy the link to slideshow so you can share it with anyone, copy link to this one slide, restart to restart the slideshow from the beginning, or show in full screen. This slideshow really takes Padlet to the next level and makes it not only a great content creation or sandbox tool, but a pretty effective presentation tool as well. Okay, you can always go to the three dots icon to exit full screen mode if you want to. And I think that should be it for the slideshow. Back to the sidebar options here. If you click on this gear icon, you can adjust any of the settings of this Padlet that we talked about when we made it. As I mentioned then, you can always come back to the settings and change something, like turn on moderation, so you can read students' comments before they're posted, for example. You can close the settings by clicking on the X icon again. But there are other options. Let's take a look here in the three dots menu to find more Padlet actions. There you'll find another menu of delicious and savory settings, some of which we've seen before. This menu just provides you with an easy way to get to more options. As you can see, the activity and slideshow icons are right there, as they were on the main page in the sidebar. So Padlet wants to make it easy for you to find your way around. Here in the More menu, we also see the option Change Format. As with most of your settings, you can always change your mind later. We chose the Wall with Sections, also known as Shelf Format, when we made our sample Nothing Gold Can Stay Padlet. But if now I decided to change the format to something like Stream or Canvas, you can choose any of those options right here. This More menu also has a couple useful options for teachers who want the free version of Padlet, Neon, to avoid the monthly subscription fee. For example, with this Clear Posts button, you can keep your Padlet title, format, settings, but clear all of the posts at once. That way, you can keep the assignment, but use it again with a different class. Under the Clear Posts option is Archive Padlet. This is also a nice feature, as you can put your Padlet in storage in Archive once you're done with it, and that way it does not count toward your limit of three Padlets. So although three is not very many, and you may want to subscribe, it's not necessary to do so. You have some flexibility. For example, if you want to do this activity with another class, you can copy the whole Padlet, as we'll see in a minute, then clear the posts of your new one and archive this old one. Uh, that way you get to keep everything and it's still free. If it's more convenient for you and you don't want to use this Padlet anymore, uh, you can also just delete it with this red Delete Padlet button. But be careful. Although it shows a trash bin, there is no removing it from the trash later, like in your operating system. Deleted posts and Padlets are dead and gone forever. So think twice or three times before deleting them. This is one of the very few things that you can't go back and change later. Below Delete Padlet, you've got a Go Full Screen button. 
which will simply expand your Padlet to the full screen view. Um, I used to use this option quite often when I was showing Padlets online or in class and projecting them to a screen. I think this feature may still be useful if you want to show the layout with all the posts like this, but with the slideshow option we talked about, you now have another nice option for projecting your Padlet posts in a probably clearer and well-organized way. Okay, to exit the full screen view, just hit the exit on your keyboard. So uh, we have talked about making Padlet content for various kinds of activities, and we've explored a lot of the settings for formatting and presenting those Padlets. But you should also be quite clear about how to share your Padlet directly with students or others. Padlets are all about interaction, so to allow others to join, you can click this arrow icon at the top of the settings in the sidebar. Now notice that we'll be sharing our completed Nothing Gold Can Stay Padlet here for this demonstration. But in most cases, you'll want to share your Padlet earlier after you make the basic assignment so that students can read posts, make posts, and comment on them as a part of the interactive activity. Notice that here it says invite members. This will allow you to share the Padlet with anyone, not only students, also colleagues or assistants in the school, for example, or even parents. And you can give each of them the level of access that you like one by one. For example, I have a teacher assistant named Grace, so I can click add member here to invite her enter her email address, and choose her account here. On the right, I can choose from these four levels of permission, from read, to write, to edit, to administer. I'll change Grace's permission from can read to can administer, so she'll now have all of the control that I have. Um, if Grace was a parent, for example, I could just leave her with the default can read settings for the Padlet without permission to make any changes. Okay, if you want to remove a member, you can click on the three dot icon and click remove. Once you've added members to Padlet, they will see your Padlet in their dashboard once they log in. Of course, there are easier ways to share the Padlet with your whole class or another group rather than inviting members one by one, um, you can invite many at once. We'll look at those options in a minute. But to adjust the privacy settings of this Padlet, we can click here on Change Privacy, and here we see four levels of privacy settings, Private, Password, Secret, and Public. If you choose Password, then you will be prompted to choose a password and the level of access visitors will have, um, as we just saw under Invite Members. Secret, this option, is a very good option for most teachers. With Secret, the Padlet is not public, but any invited members or anyone with the link or the QR code that you provide can find it. As we saw before, you can toggle on the logged in visitors only, uh, which is also nice for teachers, as it means that there will be no anonymous posts. And again, you choose the level of access everyone has, either can read, can write, or can edit. I always choose can edit, so students can participate and interact, but cannot change or delete each other's posts either accidentally or on purpose, uh, which they would be able to do if you chose can edit. But of course the setting options are up to you. Be sure to save the changes by clicking the pink save button. If you try to cancel, Padlet gives you a friendly message saying you have unsaved changes and asking if you really want to cancel without saving, so that's very nice. 
Now under this share section, you have lots of options, most of which are quite self-explanatory, so I'll just fly through them. So copy the link to Clipboard. As you expect, here you will copy the link and then you can just paste it anywhere you like to share with your students in your blog or LMS, for example. The next one is share as a slideshow, an option we looked at earlier. Here you can get a QR code, which is a great option if you're printing the access on a worksheet, uh, for example, or you can project the QR code in the class if students are accessing it there from their devices. You can get the embed code, an option I also like. If you're using a blog or a Google site website, for example, uh, you can use this to show the entire Padlet on that platform. Okay, you can always email access to uh, if you're still living in 1999. Haha, -ha, okay. Um, well, there might be some reason you want to email access to someone. You've got Facebook and Twitter options as well, not generally recommended for teaching Padlets. And you have Google Classroom, a convenient and powerful LMS if you're using it. And if you want to learn more about Classroom and how to use it, there is a whole section devoted to it in this core course in our organization unit. Okay, I promised there were a lot of ways to share your Padlet, so there you go. But there are also great options to export your Padlet, which basically means saving it in a different format outside of the Padlet platform. So to do that, you can export your Padlet as an image file, a PDF, a CSV, comma separated values file, an Excel spreadsheet, or you can just print it from here in Padlet. Now hang in there, we're almost done. But let me remind you that way back at the beginning of this training video, I suggested that once you start using Padlet and start getting familiar with all of its great features, you'll want to explore Padlets created by other experienced users to get more ideas, more examples, and more inspiration for your own use. So uh, when you're ready to do that, here is how you do it. Let's go to the dashboard of Padlet by clicking Padlet here at the corner. Now here on your dashboard, you'll see all your Padlets and ways to navigate around, including go to all Padlets or archived Padlets. And on the left here, click to recent ones, bookmarked or shared, or the gallery. At the bottom is the icon for making a new Padlet. But let's go into the gallery link here. This allows you to access tons of great Padlet examples, which you can also use as templates for yourself. If you don't want to start from scratch, you can look around here to start with one of these. Padlet allows you to search by topic or by format, uh, such as Canvas, for example. That will filter all the examples to show you only those in the Canvas format. I've chosen one here related to editing. If you want to keep one to refer to it or use it later, just click on this little bookmark icon here, which will add a bookmark. That means I can locate this Padlet again anytime from the bookmark link uh, we just saw on the dashboard. You can bookmark any of your own or any shared Padlet. Then to remake a Padlet, again, whether one of your own or one of these shared Padlets, you can simply click Remake here. Padlet will ask you to rename it, which I'll do here, and to update the description if you like. Padlet will also ask if you want to copy the design, including layout, wallpaper, theme, etc. And if you want to copy the posts, 
including texts and attachments from the original. Okay, if you're remaking one of your own Padlets, you'll also be allowed to choose whether or not to copy the people, privacy, and author's information to your new Padlet. But this example is not one of my own. When you've made your choices, hit Submit, and you can see Padlet working away. And soon, Padlet will have created your very own new Padlet in the image of the original one with any special instructions you've given it. Okay, so the remake feature uh, is fantastic. Uh, you can always make a new Padlet from an old one of your own or a shared one. And as we have seen, there are an almost infinite number of ways to edit and adapt them. With Padlet, you and your students will be actively learning side by side. Uh, remember, you can always tailor Padlet in these many ways we've seen to adjust it for different classes, to perfect it for your students' needs, even refining it as you go along, making adjustments. So that promises to increase students' interaction and engagement with their classmates and the content and you. So try it out, get familiar with its features, keep using it, and we look forward to seeing what you do with Padlet. So see you in the next section.